Here we go. Hi, I'm Bob Wood with Hinky Manufacturing, and today we're going to give you some tips and tricks for maintaining your Hinky cartridge spreader. Now, assuming the unit is fully unloaded, the first thing I like to do is a visual inspection. I start with the outside and, of course, the inside of the hopper. I'm looking at the top grade screens, make sure they're in place and they have no damage. I'm looking at the inverted V, again, in place and no damage. I'm also doing a visual inspection of the drive component. The next thing I like to do is a visual check of the strap or the tie-down system. I literally like to put my hand on each strap to ensure they're secure, in proper place, don't have any wear or damage. Of course, we'd like to have you do this on all four retaining straps. As I move towards the rear of the spreader, I like to take a once over or a visual of the rear of the hopper. One, I'm looking to make sure the tailgate hardware is locking down the trunnion bar. I like to make sure the pins are secure and in place for the cartridge spreader. I like to make sure that the spinner is bolted up tight. All the fasteners, hardware, tie downs, locks and pins are in place. While at the rear of the hopper, I like to inspect the drive components. Now as you know, the Hinky cartridge spreader comes in three different drives. The spreader in front of me happens to be a single 9 inch auger. We also have the dual 7 inch augers, as well as a pinnel chain drive. Consult your manual for the exact drive that you have. Now again, I like to take a look at the motor itself. I like to make sure that the motor bolts are tight, the hydraulic lines are in place, there's no leaks, all the fittings for the guards, all the bolts are tight, as well as the motor assembly, again no leaks, the hoses aren't chafed, they look in good shape. While I'm at the rear of the spreader, I like to take a few moments and look at a few other key components. One being the conveyor drive cover, want to make sure it's in place and secure. And when equipped on auger drives, the safety lockout cable, again in place and in good shape. Let's talk a little bit about grease and lubrication. The Hinky cartridge spreader has various grease and lubrication points. I do want to refer you back to your owner's manual for the individual grease and lubrication points for each conveyor drive. Some units are equipped with liquid systems. I like to do a little visual check for the liquid system components. I'm looking for valves that operate, any leaks that I may see. And of course, depending on the drive component, whether being hydraulic or electrical, again, leaks, connections, just looking for things that are out of the norm. Let's take a moment and talk a little bit about some tips and tricks for removing the cartridge for year end. Now here at Hinky Manufacturing, we're sad to see winter go, but we know it does. So we'd like to give you some tips and tricks, some pointers on removing the cartridge and some storage ideas for your cartridge. But let's transition into some tips and tricks on pulling the cartridge out itself. Now the first tip I'd like you to focus on is the metering door. I want to make sure the metering door is in the full and upright position before I start the process of pulling the cartridge out. The next important tip, trick, or step that I want to talk about when pulling the cartridge spreader is disconnecting all the hoses and the electrical. The spreader in front of me, again, happens to be a single 9-inch auger, so I have hydraulic connection at the auger itself. I've got my hydraulic connections that are ran from the spinner motor onto the truck, as well as an electric connection here and a pre-wet connection here. Again, critical tip trick. Let's make sure all the electrical and hydraulic connections are undone. With all the electrical and hydraulic connections undone, we can now give you the next step or the next tip and trick in pulling the cartridge out. There's a few pins that need to be pulled for this process to begin. One, the pin on the cartridge jack assembly, and two, the locking pins that lock the cartridge into the hopper. We'll make those disconnections now. Let's talk about the next step or the tip or trick I like to use when pulling a cartridge spreader. We like nylon strapping. The nylon strapping is used with the integrated hook point or pull point on the cartridge spreader. The strap makes it nice and insert and gives you a nice chain pull point. Now with our application, we're using a forklift, but you could potentially use a wheel loader or even another truck. Let me give you another quick tip and trick when pulling the cartridge spreader. I like to make sure that the jack is pulled all the way in and away from the pin point. That allows for cartridge insertion and the jack not getting in the way. 
The next tip or trick I can give you is uh, talking a little bit about the orientation of the straps or your pull chain assembly in relation to the cartridge. As you can see here, our pull assembly is in line with the cartridge. That'll give us the optimal pull point. Now our forklift operator is going to start pulling. We're going to get to the point where we can pin on the first storage leg. We'll do that now. And as you can see, we've now exposed the first set of pinpoint cartridge leg. They are optional and are available. Now let's talk about the next step, which is pinning on the optional storage leg assemblies. In our case, we went ahead and pre-adjusted the height to match the terrain or the ground we're on. And the second step is going to be to insert the pin and lock the pin into the cartridge so we can continue pulling. We'll do that now. Now that the optional rear cartridge storage leg is pinned on, we're going to continue pulling the cartridge out to expose the front set of location holes and pin on the front optional storage leg. We'll do that now. Now that the cartridge has been exposed to show the second set of optional storage leg pinpoints, we'll make that connection now. Now we've got both optional storage legs pinned to the cartridge. I like to make one last check of the metering door, make sure it's up, and I also like to take the safety guard, swing it up, and pin it off. So back here down on the ground, again, I like to make sure the metering door's up, Safety gates up. All the pins and locks are in place. Optional storage leg front, high and low. Optional storage leg pinpoint, high and adjustment leg low. One last double check before we make the final cartridge pull. And just that easy, we were able to pull out, again, a single nine auger cartridge, or in some cases, a dual seven or a pinnel chain for ease of maintenance. Now with the cartridge exposed, it really gives us a chance to look over some key components of the drive features. So this happens to be a single nine inch auger here in front of me. And again, we have the optional dual seven inch or the pinnel chain. But while we've got the single nine inch auger, I like to check the pillow block, make sure there's no buildup of material around this seal. I like to make sure my grease line is tight. My bolts are secure, as well as the drive components on the inside. I want to make sure that the auger attaching bolt to the shaft is tight, secure, and in place. It gives us a real good opportunity to visually inspect the cartridge itself, make sure there's no one excessive wear, everything looks in place and where it belongs. Again, with the unique feature of the Hinky cartridge spreader assembly, you can see how easy it is to make a visual inspection on the inside of our hopper. Now I would like you to cut to a separate video on pulling the hopper out of the truck, but for this video, we'll keep things clear and precise. One of the things I like to look at is the overall structure of the hopper. I can take a moment to look in here and look at the inverted V, again, top grade screens, I can look at my metering door, but what's unique to the cartridge spreader and a tip and trick I'd like to share with you is I like to make sure that the stainless steel roller wheels are rolling free, and we'll do that throughout the front to the back of the hopper at this time. Now some Hickey cartridge spreaders are equipped with high volume liquid tanks and now is a great opportunity to ensure that we drain the tanks for end of season storage. We do that through the integral cap assembly here and our on off valves. So while the uh, cartridge is exposed and we've done visual inspections on both the cartridge and the hopper, let's take a moment to talk about the importance of draining our liquid system. The Hinky onboard liquid system comes with a bowel valve and a quick drain. And you can see through gravity, we're able to get those tanks drained and ready for off-season storage. Let's talk a little bit about tips and tricks for cartridge insertion. So obviously the first step is gonna to be to disconnect my pull strapping and get the cartridge ready for insertion back into the hopper. Now Patrick, Sylvie and I are gonna go ahead and get the spreader manipulated or in position to get the final push back into the hopper. Let's do that now, Patrick. With the cartridge now in position, we can begin the process of inserting the cartridge back into the hopper. 
Now that we've got the cartridge aligned with the hopper, Patrick, Sylvie, and I are going to manually push the cartridge into the hopper until it gets to the point where we can unpin the optional front storage legs. We'll do that now. Now with the front of the cartridge inserted into the rear of the hopper, it's now time to unpin that front set of storage legs and we'll do that now. So you can see now we unpin the optional front storage legs and again Patrick and I are going to continue pushing the cartridge in until we're real close to the rear storage leg area. Here we go. We're now at the point where we run the cartridge side jack out so the hole is in line with the slot on the hopper side. This pin goes in this position, which will allow me to crank the jack and pull the cartridge back into the hopper. We're now at the point where the cartridge is inserted far enough into the hopper that we can use the manual crank jack to pull the cartridge in the remainder of the way and put the locking pins in. We'll do that now. Now, of course, the final step would be to put the locking pin in here to lock the cartridge into the hopper, make all the hydraulic and electrical connections, and you're ready to go. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about tips and tricks in terms of cartridge storage. Now, the Hinky cartridge system gives you the flexibility to store your cartridges indoors. As you can imagine, keeping those cartridges out of the weather during the off-season is a big benefit in terms of fleet and maintenance savings.